Thank you, Clayton. Well, the stroke of a pen, the president issued an executive order that gives him sweeping control of climate change policy. The order appoints a task force of officials to advise the administration on how to respond to severe storms, wildfires, droughts, and, quote, other potential impacts of climate change. Myron e. Bell is the director of the Global Warming Policy of the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Thanks a lot uh, for joining us this morning, Myron. So the idea is that the president can single-handedly prevent hurricanes? What is the point? <laughs> well, it, it's uh, really a way to expand the size and scope of the federal government's involvement in controlling and managing our lives. Uh, the president has created a new interagency council that involves every federal department to, uh, to plot the future for us, and also a, uh, a local, state, and tribal government uh, task force to advise the president on how the federal government ought to be funding uh, state, local, and tribal efforts to uh, to uh, manage and control our lives. So th this is uh, more big government, I would say. I'm struck by the by the certainty of the tone from from this announcement. The the liberal yes. catechism states the earth is getting warmer because of a buildup of greenhouse gases. But there are many legitimate scientists who believe the earth may in fact be getting cooler because of solar activity. There is not a consensus that the president's theory is ironclad and correct. Is that right? Uh, yes, uh, and also they, the statement, the, the executive order claims that we're already seeing the effects of, of uh, global warming. And one of, one of the things, just to take one example, is an increase in wildfires. Well, I hope that the president's uh, council will consider the fact that the increase in wildfires is on federal lands in the West, on national forests, is largely due to federal mismanagement of exactly. those forests. And so uh, I hope maybe they'll come up with a sensible uh, recommendation on that, but I doubt it. It's so boris forests that have been destroyed by beetles and are sitting there as kindling waiting for the next fire. It's an insane policy. I agree with that um, completely. What kind of effect will this executive order have on the American economy and on productivity? Uh, it's hard to say. I would, I would guess it will uh, it help contribute to all the other Obama administration policies that are uh, creating uh, essentially perpetual economic stagnation in this country. Does it drive you crazy that the left and the Obama administration in particular acts as if if you ask any question about their global warming faith that you are a heretic, you're a denier, you're somehow immoral, isn't that the antithesis of science which encourages free inquiry? Uh, yes, uh, you know the president's science advisor, uh, John Holdren, uh, is uh, essentially a fruitcake. Uh, he, back, going back to the 1970s, virtually every prediction he has ever made uh, has been wrong, and he's he's not a harmless fruitcake. Uh, he's been an advocate for decades of mandatory population control. He's uh, one of the co-chairmen of the uh, uh, interagency council. So, uh, you know, when you put people like this in charge, and you're taking your advice from people like John Holdren, who's a close ally, for example, of Paul Ehrlich. Uh, you're going to end up with these disastrous uh, policies and, and planning. It's really, really stunning. All in the name of science, too. Thanks a lot for joining us this morning. That was really interesting. Thank you, Tucker. Next on the rundown, put down that smartphone. Why switching back to your old-fashioned flip phone may be the key to lasting love and a happy family life.